for a place, it's a place for like women and children. They're like in hiding because they've been like sexually and physically abused by their husbands and boyfriends and they're running away from them. So it's, it's in Tacoma, but like you can't give out the address because you know, they're in hiding. And I found about it through my um, grandma's friend's church and they go there a lot to help out. So I was like, okay, I'll go there. And um, at first, I, my intentions were just to like help serve the food and then leave. And so we, I got there and I was making the sandwiches and serving the food and talking a little bit to the people. And like, I felt really good about what I did. And I was like, I was like, all right, ready to go. Like I was done. But um, there was a girl that was sitting in like the back corner and she kind of like caught my attention cause she was, oh my gosh, she was so beautiful. She was one of the prettiest girls I've ever seen in my life. Like no joke, she was gorgeous. And um, my friend was ready to go. So I was like, okay, you go, I'm gonna go talk to this girl for a little bit. So I started talking to her. And first we started out like small talk and I wanted to get her like comfortable enough to like open up to me and tell me about herself. And so I told her a little bit about myself and then she decided to open up and tell me about her. And I found out she's 18, so she's only a year older than me. And um, she dropped out of school when she was 16 to go live with her boyfriend who was, he was like 34, 35, I think she mm -hmm. said. And um, she lived with her, or lived with him for a couple of years and the relationship started to get like really abusive. And um, she started telling me about it and like, oh my gosh, it, it was, I, I don't cry, but like I started to tear up for her because the things she did, it was just sick. But anyways, um, and she started telling me more about it and like getting to know me more and telling me more. And I couldn't get over like how pretty she was and I was like, why are you here? Like, and she had nowhere else to go. And so when she decided to finally leave um, her boyfriend's house, like she had to run away from him. So she had to like sneak out at night to like get away from him. And so she had to leave all of her stuff at his house. She had nothing, like she had nowhere to go. And she found out about this faith home. So she came there. She got there in November, I think it was. She's been there for, I guess it's almost February, so it's three months. And she had no clothes. Like, she was really dirty. And, like, all of her clothes were all torn up and stuff. And I felt so bad for her. So I told her, I was like, all right, I'm going to come back in a minute. Like, I'm going to bring you something. So I went home. I grabbed, like, all of my nice clothes. She was about the same size as me. I grabbed all my clothes, all my jeans everything I could find and I put it in a bag for her. And then I went to Target, I bought her a lot of makeup, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to Target, I bought her um, foundation, like powder, mascara, eyeshadow, everything to make a girl look pretty. Like she was already dropped in gorgeous, like I couldn't believe it. But just to make her feel good about herself. And um, I asked her, before I left, I asked her what size her feet were and they were, they were way bigger than mine. So I called up my dad and I had him meet me at the mall. So we went to the mall. We bought her some nice tennis shoes and some nice like winter boots and stuff that would match all the clothes that I got her. So we got all that stuff and we brought it to her and she was so grateful. Like she would just cry and cry and like thank me over and over again. And like I sat there for like five minutes and I was like, Oh you're welcome and I could and like I had to leave because otherwise I'd invite her home until like a couple years. <laughs> so I had to leave. So um yeah, I brought her like all my clothes. I bought her a bunch of makeup and shoes. So if I'm like dressed like a bum for the next couple of days, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have to go shopping and get myself some new clothes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I learned that it was like, it was the most humbling experience ever. Like, and I learned not to take like your nice things for granted or even like your not so nice things, like just anything you have, like appreciate it. Cause you could be living like a king right now, like to someone else in there. Like, I don't know, they, people would kill me. They really would. <laughs> and I would do it again, but probably not the same situation because, I don't know, I'd feel like I, I don't know. I would, I don't know, I'd feel like I have to buy something for everyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a really humbling experience, and I'm glad I did it. And I gave her my number to keep in contact with me, so, yeah. That's